Well, hello again, everybody. Well, today I thought we would build the clock board for our RC2014, which is our little Z80 microcomputer that we're going to build up. So, yeah, we're going to build the clock. So it comes on a little PCB. We need uh, we need to mount it on a header, and it tells us we need to fit the header first. So we'll uh, we'll go ahead. We'll do that. We'll just cut. That, actually, we'll do that now. Oh, that's a bit tight. I'm sure it'll go in though. Sure, there's a joke there somewhere. We need uh, we need some resistors, which it says you've got to fit end on. So, what resistors do we need? We need a 2K2. Well, let's find that 2K2. Looking for something with red on it. Yeah, that's near enough. We're looking for uh, what's next? A one meg. Oh, can't find a one meg, but I can find a 1K. Uh, is that a one meg? Yeah, near enough. One meg. So we need them. We need some. Uh, more capacitors. We need some 22 picofarad capacitors. Uh, yep, that's got totally minute numbers on it, which I can't read. It's got 22 on it. Is that a J? I think it. Mm, don't know. Double check that. Yep, 21.04 piccolo ferrets. Close enough. And we need our little uh, inverter chip, our uh, little 74 whatever it is, 74HCT04. That's not a knife. This is a knife. Yeah, I'm going to keep doing that, I'm afraid. Yep, there it is. In fact, we've got a few of them to choose from. 74HCT04. So we need one of them. And uh, I think we'll put that in a socket as well. Let's see if we can find some sockets, because at some point I'm going to plug it in wrong and blow it up, because I blow everything up. I'm afraid all my sockets and things are all just crammed together here. So the chances of me finding the right one, I have to go for them all, is that right? Oh, lovely jubbly, we got one. See, my company spares no expense. I only steal the best, proper term pin headers. So I'm not exactly sure what you call this uh, arrangement, but it uses, uh, you know, an inverter chip. And they connect the output of the inverter to the input. But uh, so if you actually ever just do that, what you'll find is that the uh, the chip will um, will just start oscillating at some uh, at some frequency. Can't really say what. It all depends on the uh, particular IC technology that's employed and the inductance and self capacitance and the supply voltage. Hundreds of different factors, but basically it'll oscillate at quite a high frequency. And it'll probably also get quite warm as well, <laughs> or they can do just because of the number of, because uh, you'll probably be exceeding the number of transitions, the number of state changes that the uh, the IC is designed to uh, to do. Don't exactly know what you call that, but you know you're effectively overclocking it. So what they actually do is rather than just connecting the output to the input, you actually connect uh, it via a crystal. And what that crystal does, it effectively just tames the oscillation and makes it uh, oscillate at the, um, well, at the crystal frequency. And the crystal frequency for this one is, uh, oh, well, I'll have to have a look because I've forgotten. I think it's around 7 megs, but it's one of those odd frequencies. Uh, 7, God, I can't even see it. My eyesight must be bad. 7.37 megahertz. And the reason they use such, you know, you say, well, why don't they use 4 megs or 10 megs? Well, the reason they're doing that is uh, what they'll be doing, they'll be dividing this frequency down somewhere, and you'll find that it will um, easily generate one of the, uh, the baud rates for the serial port. So that's why quite often when you see, uh, you know, odd crystal frequencies and pieces of equipment, it's because they're dividing it down to make like a one second pulse or hundredths of a second pulse or to generate a baud rate. Um, yeah, so that's why you see it. And, uh, well, I don't think the, uh, a lot of the picks that I use that tend to have an internal oscillator, or basically some of them have a few different types of external, uh, internal oscillator, but I don't think the Z80 has one of them. Um, but the other thing is you quite often find that even if you have got a chip, an IC that's got an internal oscillator, it's often not very good to do communications with because it tends to drift with heat and age and all those kinds of and supply voltage. So again, if you're trying to do comms and stuff like that, you probably want to put a crystal in rather than relying on a resonator or an internal oscillator.
the actual uh, microcomputer that we're building, it actually communicates to the outside world using an RS-232 port. And of course, one of the common uh, board rates is, um, what is it, is it 11, 15, 200? It, it's something like that. But basically, if we take that, uh, the frequency of the crystal, which is, uh, let's just type that in, it's 7.3728 megahertz, and, uh, well, megahertz exponential 6. And what we'll do that, we'll just divide that down by, effectively, a binary value. So let's just divide that by 64, because I know that's going to work out. So we'll divide that by 64, and that equals a board rate, or it equals 115.200. And of course, a lot of people will be familiar with that as being a typical serial board rate. I'd actually say that that's probably a faster board rate than I've ever used for normal serial ports. You know, I normally tend to use really slow board rates, 9,600. So this one's actually uh, screaming fast. I think I've probably explained that to death, haven't I? That was my rubbish explanation and I'm sticking to it. Well, these pads are actually quite small on here, but I'm kind of getting to the point now where, you know, I almost need to use a, a magnifier all the time. I'm not using it at the moment, but these, these pads are probably about as small as I would normally want to uh, to deal with. Right, so we've soldered in the uh, the IC socket now. <laughs> I was just thinking, uh, for a terrible moment that I was looking at the uh, the legend on it and thinking, have I soldered it on the wrong side? But no, I don't think I have. Just, I uh, just stopped for a moment there and glanced at the instructions because uh, for some reason it just says the uh, the pin header has to be installed before the, uh, the crystal. I don't know why. I just... Uh, what to double check I had got that the right way around though. It, the, um, the actual holes on this particular header, the, the through holes on the PCB, they're actually quite tight, which means if you want to actually remove it, you can't really get the solder sucker in to suck the solder out because the, uh, the pads are so tight around the pins. So uh, yeah, I probably wouldn't get this out if I put it in wrongly. Right, we'll drop the, uh, we'll drop the crystal in now. All right, it's a little bit of an interference fit, I see, the pin header, right. It does go in, but, uh, yeah, they've obviously made a slight mistake there and uh, not left quite enough clearance. Hopefully you can see that, that the, uh, you know, the can, the, the case, the, hopefully you can see that the casing on this uh, crystal that I've just inserted, at one end of the can, it's uh, it's pressing against the plastic header connector, and at the other end of the uh, crystal, it's actually encroaching on the uh, the pad for resistor R2. So uh, yeah, that's a bit how you're doing. We'll have to be a bit careful with that, I think. Now I think you can see that there's the uh, I've got the resistor at the moment, and uh, you can see where the body is meant to go. The body of the resistor is meant to go on the side where the round circles are. But if I actually put it there, it's an interference fit with a crystal. So I'm going to not follow the instructions on the kit. And I've, I've actually turned the resistor around because there's a, there should be a push switch above it. But I'm not going to fit the push switch because that's already installed on the back plane. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it like that because uh, the resistor won't go on the correct way around. I'm not going to whinge too much because I was a bit whingy yesterday about the uh, the design of the, uh, the printed circuit board. And... Uh, well, I guess if I was doing a circuit board for, for production use, if it's a hobby project, it doesn't really matter, does it? Um, you know, you just bodge it together. But I think if I was uh, going to sell this to somebody, I would try and, um, you know, get it get it right. And if you don't get it right the first time, uh, you know, you can always just rerun the, the PCBs. It's not expensive to get PCBs anymore. Again, back in the day... Uh, Probably you did as well. We all used to mess around with, um, you know, ferric chloride, and uh, yeah, God, you'd spill that all over your kitchen and your mum's tea towels, and uh, yeah, you'd just get in serious trouble, wouldn't you? And you'd poison the cat. So uh, yeah, we all used to uh, mess around with chemicals, and oh God, all the messing about we did with UV exposure boxes and Lumicolor pens, and oh, you know, it was a right rigmarole, wasn't it? Um, but if you haven't 
tried doing a PCB in recent years, you'd you'd be surprised at uh, you know how easy it is. Um, you know, there's so many of these vendors now in China. You just you know you draw your uh, you draw your PCB in one of these CAD packages. There's lots of free ones around, and um, you just send off your files and. Two or three weeks later, your board comes back, and uh, well, I've got to admit, the the quality that I've had from some of the PCB suppliers in China is um, fantastic. That's annoying. My soldering iron's decided to back the power down. Come on, wake up. So there's really not any good reason to uh, to mess around with uh, chemicals anymore. Uh, if I was doing something simple and I needed it really quickly, I guess I might get the uh, the etching you know get the etching stuff out but well there's, there's just no reason to do it if you if you plan your projects properly you uh you know you get a few pcbs on the go and um you know it doesn't really matter if it takes two weeks to three weeks to turn them around and you can get them quicker than that you know it's like anything else if you want to pay um, a rapid turnaround um, you can get them much quicker but Generally, you know, if if you're a hobbyist, you can wait two or three weeks. It's not the end of the world, is it? Yep, that all looking good. Right, we need our. Um, oh no, well, put the other resistors in. So we need what's that? R one twenty two K. Sorry, two K two, which is that one. I've noticed. I've installed that. Um, Oh damn, I've installed that resistor upside down. Oh dear, all the electrons are going to fall out the bottom. Well, no, what I meant was uh, I've put the colour band at the bottom. That's one of my little pet peeves as well. You know, when you look at circuit boards that people have put together and uh, they're all inconsistent. Half of them have the, uh, the tolerance band at the top and half of them have the tolerance band at the bottom. God, I am pernickety, aren't I? God, yeah. I drive some of the guys mad at work because they'll, they'll, they, you know, they'll get something delivered by a supply and uh, yeah, they go, it's fine. And then I walk out there and I'll go, well, that's not quite straight, is it? And this is not right. And that's not right. And I don't go looking for problems. I just, I don't know. I just like things to be right. Well, in theory, that should be okay. We've just got to put our um, RIC in now. Well, you know, generally, uh, I don't take any interest in ESD protection. I've never, uh, I've been lucky, I've never... Oh God, there were the sockets. God, they were right in front. Oh, but they are the crap ones. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm going to stick with my proper nice uh, turn key. Uh, sorry, turn pin sockets. I'm not going to use these uh, folded over uh, bits of, you know, metal crap. Yeah, no, I uh, don't like them. Um, right. I want, what am I doing? Forgotten. Oh yeah, I want my IC, which was a 74 uh, HCT04, which I think, as I said, it's some kind of um, not gate, isn't it? 74 HCT. Yep. Uh, so I, was I explaining the way this circuit works? I've forgotten. Yeah, so basically it uses, um, it uses one of the gates along with a crystal to make the oscillator and it um, also uses one of the other gates just as a buffer um, you know to to drive the um, to drive the clock through the back plane one thing about using these turn pin sockets though is they're not quite as forgiving regarding the uh, alignment you know you press things down and then one of the pins always just bends out goes ping and jumps out sideways You going in? Yeah, that's a nice tight fit. Hmm. I don't know why that whole IC looks as though it's installed a little bit on the PES. Technical term. Oh no, the electrons will fall out. Yeah, I think we'll... And I think we've got to install this um, backwards, if you like. Uh, it doesn't go doesn't go forward on the back plane like this. It goes that way. Let me bring you in a bit. So here's the back plane. So I believe you've got to put it 
the uh, effectively the wrong way around. So well, I said that. Does that go that way? Ground VCC reset and clock. No, oh, it does go that way. I thought you had to install this backwards, if you like. It tell you, it's got it's basically it's got written on the back that you line these up with the uh, the legend, but it it doesn't quite line up. And yet, I also know that again some what I would call mistakes. On uh, on this, it, it references something called VCC, which is obviously going to be plus five volts. It references a uh, plus V. Well, it references VCC and GND, whereas actually on here it references GND and GND and five volts. Well, you know, it would I would have it would have been better if they just kept it consistent. So yeah, we've got to go. So basically, pin pin one. If we're calling this pin one is zero volts. So is that right? Pretty sure I've got that right. But what we'll do is we'll we will check it. We don't want to blow it up. I mean, we're not going to do a lot of damage if we've got it wrong. The worst that'll happen is we'll we'll blow up the IC and we'll put another one in. But uh, yeah, let's try not to blow it up. Bleepy bleep, bleep bleep bleep. Uh, where's the ground gone? Ground, ground, ground. Well, I'm going to go for middle pin because that's ground. Middle pin of the uh, of the old regulator there. And is that? Yeah, we've got a bleep there, so that's ground. So we'll just check the five volts, which is the one next to it. We got bleepy bleep. All good. Well, as you know, that power supply we were using the other day wasn't really behaving itself. It was I said it was a 12 volt power supply, but unloaded we were getting um, 16 volts out of it, and this isn't really going to put any kind of uh, proper load on it. So what I decided to do was uh, get medieval. So I've just cut the wire off it, and uh, we're going to connect this board going forward on my uh, lab power supply. And uh, the main reason for doing that is because I want to use the uh, the current limit on the uh, lab power supply. Um, so that's what we're going to do. It's fighting me. All right. Centre positive. Yeah, got there in the end, didn't we? Okay, so we plug this in now. Um, green light should come on and our clock should start up. Is that right? Yeah, we proved that, didn't we? And uh, we should be able to check that using the old uh, oscilloscope. So let's plug that in. Well, we've got a green light on. That's something. Must be working. We've got a green light on. Uh, let's switch the oscilloscope on. And uh, come back sometime later because it will take about a year to boot up. Okay, let's, uh, let's switch the oscilloscope on and then wait some weeks for it to start up. Dum, 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 dum. There we go. Something happening. Dum, dum, dum. Blinky lights. Sometime later. Dum, 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 dum. More blinking lights. Dum, 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 dum. Dum, 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 dum. dum. Still nothing. Dum, 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 dum. Some considerable time later. Still waiting. Are we nearly there? Come on, you can do it. There we go. So the question is, are we going to have a clock? Got some of our special uh, 
well our steel wild steel wild special oh god so we're going to use some of our steel wire special cable here all the way from uh, china's finest that's on the ground isn't it groundy ground 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 Yeah, that's jumping up and down, so is that 5 volts? Do you want to see what's happening on the scope? Yeah, I think you probably do, don't you? Okay, so let's have a look at the output voltage from the regulator. Yeah. 5 volts. A little bit of noise on there, but yeah, it's normal. Right, so where's the clock then? So it looks like we've got our nice square wave there. What can you say? 7.37 megahertz. Looks like a square wave. Lovely. I think we've reached a, uh, a logical point there for me to go and have my dinner and say, until next time, that'll do. Thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye bye for now.